Hi, Philip Dockery here. We all have patients that have conjunctival cholesis that we often manage with conservative measures such as artificial tears. And oftentimes that's enough for patients to get by with their symptoms of irritation and maybe tearing. However, some patients need surgery and I'm gonna walk you through our surgical approach that's minimally invasive, that's quick and easy on both us and the patient. And so we do a cautery technique. And so you see these cautery forceps, I pinch the conge and then cauterize. This first pinch was a little bit too hot and a little bit too long, so you see the conjunctiva sticking to it a little bit, so I have to get a Q-tip and sweep off the conjunctiva and then adjust some of the settings so to make sure that I'm not burning the conjunctiva too hotly. And so I'm, I'm trying to pinch large sheets of the conjunctiva, not just with the tips, but with as much of the, the forceps as I can so that I do as few burns as possible. And I'm tracing kind of here along the inferior conjunctiva where it's most visibly noticeable uh, on exam. And just pinching the conjunctiva to the appropriate tightness that we want. And so what are other techniques that we could be using for to treat conjunctival cholesis surgically? Well, the most common is probably surgical excision of the excess conjunctiva. However, that's usually a lot more tedious and cumbersome. We run into a lot more bleeding. We need sutures, oftentimes need glue. Um, and so very expensive and time consuming ways to surgically treat this that we're achieving here with uh, the cautery. Another thing with surgical excision is that it's very localized. You can really only do the inferior bulbar conge or only the superior or only the areas that's most affected. However, with cautery, you're not, you don't have those limitations. You can do all quadrants of the bulbar conge. You can shrink and you see over here, I'm starting to shrink some areas temporarily. And then I'll work my way around the globe trying to appropriately shrink the conge um, so that the patient has less symptoms. And so by being able to address all quadrants, we're really able to address the patient's symptoms in a better fashion because while the inferior bulbar con conjunctival cholesis may be the most clinically obvious on exam, the superior bulbar con conjunctival cholesis may also be um, symptomatically bothersome for the patient because it interacts with the, uh, the upper eyelid as the patient's blinking. So being able to target both of those hemispheres for um, conjunctival cholesis treatment helps improve the patient's symptoms after the surgery. And here you can see me shrinking some of the superior conge, again with the forceps, just lightly doing it into it to the point where I feel like the conge has the appropriate tightness. And so this is really our technique for how we like to surgically manage conjunctival cholesis because it's, as you can see in this unedited video, it's taken about three minutes to effectively treat all quadrants for this patient. So thanks for joining us as we go over the way that we approach conjunctival cholesis from a surgical manner so that we're not having to spend a long time in the OR and we're not having to use sutures and we're not having to use glue or amniotic membrane. Um, it's simply cauterizing m multiple quadrants and improving the patient's symptoms. Thanks for joining us.